Welcome. This is John Metz, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Corpus Christi, Texas, bringing you the hurricane. Hurricanes form over the warm tropical Atlantic from dissipating frontal systems or tropical waves that move off the coast of Africa. As a wave gets better organized and develops a closed center of circulation, it becomes a tropical depression. Wind speeds are less than 39 miles per hour. Wind spiral bands develop around the center of circulation, and wind speeds increase to 39 to 73 miles per hour. It becomes a tropical storm and is given a name. When wind speeds increase to 74 miles per hour or greater, the system becomes a hurricane. Major hurricanes produce winds sustained at 155 miles per hour and can have gusts as high as 200 miles per hour. Hurricanes are heat engines that feed off the warm tropical waters. Humidity flows into the storm at low levels. It's an area of low pressure with rising air in the thunderstorms around the center we call the eye wall. The system has exhaust out the top. This is a very efficient engine with a sinking motion in the center of the storm we call the eye. The sinking motion suppresses the clouds, evaporating the clouds in this area, making nearly cloud-free skies. The circulation in a hurricane is low pressure near the ocean surface, with high pressure sitting on top of the hurricane where the exhaust is taking place. Hurricanes vary in size. Some are large, some are very small. Both of these hurricanes were Category 5s. Hurricane Floyd on the left had a 50-mile diameter eye, while Hurricane Andrew was only 30. Hurricanes pose a number of hazards to coastal residents, from storm surge to damaging winds, tornadoes, and flooding. We will examine each of these. Storm surge is simply caused by the winds blowing on the ocean surface, creating a circulation that extends two to three hundred feet deep across the oceans. As the storm approaches land, this deep water circulation can no longer take place. As it feels the continental shelf below, the water has nowhere to go but rise up flooding low-lying coastal areas, and the surge of water then passes into the intercoastal waterways and bays. The greatest surge occurs in the right front quadrant of the hurricane. This is where the greatest destruction typically occurs, and it can be as much as 30 to 50 miles in diameter. The southern portion of a hurricane, water and wind is blowing the opposite direction. You can have storm surge erosion on the back side of barrier islands, and it's enough to possibly drain the intercoastal waterways and bays. Hurricane Katrina recorded one of the highest surges ever witnessed along the U.S. coastline. It was absolute devastation. This is near Gulfport, Mississippi. Note the Super Kmart store, the McDonald's, and the sign structure completely vanished. Businesses, restaurants, hotels, and apartment complexes. Only thing left was a slab. Closer examination of the Kmart reveals storm surge destruction. This is Highway 90, devastated by the powerful storm surge. Hurricane Rita also packed a punch as it made landfall along southeast Texas and Louisiana. The storm followed a path, taking it just east of Beaumont, Port Arthur, placing the dangerous right front quadrant over Holly Beach, Creole, and Erath. The greatest destruction occurred where the surge was the highest, some 15 to 18 feet of storm surge. However, the surge extended some 80 miles east of where the center crossed the coastline. Storm surge flooding even penetrated 30 miles inland to Lake Charles. 
the scenes out of Holly Beach were devastation. Creole and Erath, well east of the center, experienced storm surge inundation. And here's Lake Charles, some 30 miles inland from the coast, a six-foot surge into the small business area, homes and residences, and the downtown Lake Charles community inundated by storm surge. How large of a surge can we expect on the mid-Texas coast? The National Weather Service has a storm surge model. For a Category 3 hurricane, illustrates a surge as high as 11 feet along the barrier islands, 11 feet over inland bays and waterways, and 16 feet possible all the way up the Nueces River Basin. You have to subtract your elevation to determine the depth of the water in any given location. This information is also plus or minus 20% accuracy. A Category 4 worst case scenario illustrates a potential of a surge reaching 13 feet along the barrier islands and 16 to 24 feet in and around Corpus Christi Bay. That's three feet over the seawall protecting downtown Corpus Christi. We've never had a Category 5 along the Texas coast and it's a very rare phenomena. But if it were to occur, we could see a storm surge as high as 16 feet along the barrier islands and in excess of 20 feet over Corpus Christi and in and around Corpus Christi Bay. It would be devastating for our community. High winds are also a threat in hurricanes and they don't just extend to coastal residents. Hurricane force gusts were measured as far inland as a hundred miles when Hurricane Rita made landfall over southeast Texas. Note the damage from winds in Hurricane Rita. Very powerful hurricanes like Andrew, a Category 5, can contain very powerful wind gusts. Note the 200 mile an hour wind gusts in pink on this radar image. It produced damage equivalent to an F3 tornado across a 30 mile swath of South Florida. Tornadoes touch down to add insult to injury, as if we don't have enough problems already. Tornadoes typically occur in the eyewall region or in the rain bands, some 150 to 200 miles away from the center of circulation. Last year, in 2005, with Hurricane Emily, tornadoes touched down along the mid-Texas coast in excess of 150 miles from the center of the storm. Heavy rains and flooding are also a threat from slow-moving tropical storms or hurricanes. On many occasions, South Texas has experienced rainfall events where we produced between two and three feet of rain in just a couple of days' time. Everyone should consider flood insurance. South Texas has experienced 55 hurricanes dating back to 1851. We've had 18 major hurricanes, categories 3 and 4, in this same 150-year period. Celia was the last major hurricane to make a direct assault on the Corpus Christi area back in 1970. And this is the last 30 years. Note the gap along the mid-Texas coast. An entire generation of citizens have grown up, never experiencing a major hurricane. It only takes one. I'm John Metz. Thank you for watching.